Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. In this video, we're going to build a really simple but really useful question dialog. This is excellent for asking your player confirmation on anything, like for example, do you really want to quit the game or really equip an item and so on. The way the code is set up makes it super simple to use. I've used some version of this in pretty much every single one of my Steam games. So let's go ahead and build it. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Learn how to make a Builder Defender game using c -sharp, just like I make my own Steam games. Or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting. Or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. Okay, so here I am in my empty scene. Now let's begin by first of all making the UI elements. So I've got my scene over here, I've got the canvas, so just go inside, let's first create an empty game object, our nice container. Let's name it the question dialog UI. And now inside, let's make another object. Let's make a UI an image. Let's name this the background. And now let's expand it to fit the whole area. So this one right here and hold down shift to also center the pivot. Okay, so just like that, make sure everything is zero on everything. And now essentially we can play around the size of the parent and automatically modify the background. Okay. Now for the sprite itself, over here in my project files I've got this really nice sprite. It's essentially just a square with round corners. This is the same sprite that I used in making the chat bubble, which is another interesting element you can easily add to your games. So with that, all I've got it set up here is if I go into the sprite editor. Over here you can see that I just dragged the borders. So what that means is that now on the background over here I can select and make it sliced and I can modify the pixels per unit in order to make it pretty much like that. So whatever size I set, now I've got some nice round corners. So just a bit of fun. Okay, so next up let's make it a dark gray and as a bit of fun maybe add an outline and maybe also a shadow. Okay, so there's our basic starting point. Now next thing we need is just some simple text. So let's right click, go into UI, and we're going to make a text. And we're going to use Text Mesh Pro since it has a lot more settings. So let's name the object text. And then over here, let's set this up in order to fit whatever we want. Let's put a new text and put just a whole bunch of text in there. Now let's also extend it to occupy the whole parent. So let's put everything in there. Now here, let's select auto size in order to automatically size whatever text we give it. So here, let's see what a good size would be. Okay, so like this, minimum of 12, maximum of 24. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now just up here, make it nice and centered, centered on everything, okay. For the wrapping, leave it enabled so that it wraps. And the overflow here, yep, for now, let's leave it on overflow. Okay, now just modify that a little bit just so it doesn't touch the exactly the edges. So just like that. And again, we can still play around the parent size. So as we size this, yep, you can see, yep, it always matches. Okay, so far so good. Next, let's make our two buttons. So first of all, just an empty game object. Let's name it the yes button. Then inside again, also another UI image for the background. And select the same thing. Put this one maybe in a green. And again, fit it to occupy the parent. And now I just play around the parent size. And of course, we also need some text. So UI, make another text. Okay, so there's the button, so just the background and some text. Now on the parent itself, let's add the button component. Okay, and here we can also use the automatic transition, so just drag the background reference for a color tint. For the normal call, let's select this one. So by the way, here's a quick tip. You can right-click directly on the color in order to copy. Go back into the yes button for the normal color. Let's paste it, that's the normal color. And then again, this one tints on top of the other one, so make this one in white. Okay, good. And for the highlight to color, once again, we can copy, paste this one. Then just make it a bit lighter. And for the press color, same thing, just maybe darker. And these two others we no longer need. Okay, so far so good. We've got the yes button, so just duplicate it. And next to it, this is going to be no button. So the no button. And inside for the text, put it on no. And then for the color, instead of green, let's make it on based on reds. All right, so here we have our basic structure. So we've got some text, a simple yes button and no button. All right, so now let's handle the code. So let's go ahead and create a new C-sharp script. Name this the question dialog UI. 
and just attach a script onto it and let's open. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Okay, so here first let's grab all of our references to the buttons and the text. So let's make a private void awake. And on the awake, first grab the text. So we need to add using TM Pro, since we're using Text Mesh Pro. Let's define a field. So Text Mesh Pro U GUI, since this is a UI element. Let's make the Text Mesh Pro. And then just grab it. And we do a transform, we do a find find the text object and get the component text mesh pro UGUI. Now if you prefer you can also just make this a serialized film and then drag the reference in the editor but personally I prefer this. Okay so next up for the button so private this will be a button which is inside using unity engine.ui. Okay so we've got the button and it's going to be the yes button and then the no button. So let's go the yes button equals you do a transform we find the yes button and get the component of type button same thing for the no button and yep okay so we have all of our references now let's make a function to actually show a question so public void let's name it show question and now for the parameters let's receive a string for the question text so question text and then for the yes and no, let's receive actions. So action, which is inside using system. Now an action, if you don't know, this is a delegate. I cover them in more detail in another video. So go watch that if you don't know what it means. Essentially, it lets you pass in a function as an argument. So the yes action, and then the action for the no action. So we're going to pass in the question text and then a function that will be triggered when we press yes and another one that will be triggered when we press no. So now we just assign these. So first going to our text mesh pro in order to set the text to our question text. And then we go into the yes button. And in this case, we're using the unity engine button. So we need to add a listener. So we go into the on click, add a listener. And now here, as you can see, it takes in a unity action. So not an action. Now we could modify this code to receive unt actions, but personally I like to work with the normal actions instead. So what we can simply do is just do a new unity action and just encapsulate our action. So essentially we're converting a system.action into a unity action. And you can see that they have pretty much exactly the same signature. So over here, public delegate void unity action, as you can see, no return, no parameters, nothing which is the exact same thing as over here on the action. So public download void and it's just action. And if you want to know how I did this, I just pressed on the F12, which is the same thing as right clicking and go to definition. So it goes to definition and shows you where that is defined. Okay, so that's the yes. And then finally for the no button, when we click, we trigger the no action. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So now let's test this to make sure that everything is working. So over here on awake, let's call show question. And we're going to say, do you want to do this? This is our question. Then for the S action, again, let's pass in a Lambda, which again, if you're not familiar with it, then go watch the link in the description where I cover Lambdas and delegates in more detail. This syntax over here is in Lambda, which is essentially a way of defining a function directly inside some other text. So here for the S action, let's just do debug.log yes, and then pass in also a Lambda for the no, and for the low, let's do debug.log no. Okay, that's it, very simple. Let's see if it works. And yep, right away it says the question, do you want to do this, yes or no? So if I press on yes, and there you go over here on the console, I can see, yep, I've got a yes, press on no, and yep, I've got a no. All right, so everything is working. Now let's just expand upon this a little bit. For example, when we press on any of these, we should hide the question, so let's handle that. In order to do that, let's make a function to hide the question dialog. So let's make a private void, just call it hide. And on hide, we just set the game object that set active into false. So we just disable the game object, which automatically hides everything. Now, all we really want is to call this just before we trigger all of our actions. So in here on our add listener, let's actually pass in a Lambda. So let's create one. And essentially when we click on the button, the first thing we do is we hide the question dialog and then we trigger the yes action. And then same thing over here on the no, so we just go and first of all, we hide and then the no action. Now, the reason why I'm first doing the hide is just in case you pass in a question that then afterwards asks another question. If you instead put the hide after the yes action, 
then it would show the question, it would trigger the yes action, which would try to ask another question, but then it would go back in here and it would hide, so it would not show the second question. So that is why, first you hide, then you trigger the yes action and let it do whatever it needs to. All right, so now we should be able to select one and only one answer. So let's see. So here, do you want to do this? Let's say yes, and there you go, the question hides, and you appear on the console. Yep, we've got our yes. All right, so just like this, we have our simple question dialog fully working. Now let's polish this up to make it extremely easy to use. So first of all, let's make the single element pattern in order to make this super easy to use from anywhere in our code base. So first up, let's make a public static question dialog UI, make a static instance. And as always, you make the get public, but the set private. That means that this property can only be set by this specific class and all the other ones can only get it. So over here on await, let's set the instance equals this. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So anywhere else in our code, we can access the static instance, and then we can access the public show question. So now here, let's just make another script. Let's call it testing question dialog. Then let's just make game object to run it and just drag it. Okay, now let's open. And in here, now it's super simple to ask a question. So let's make a private void update. So an update lets us for if input dot get key down. So when I press the space bar, let's do get key down just so it triggers only once. Okay, so when I press the space bar, let's go into the question dialog UI. We access the static instance and then we call show question and then ask a question. So for example, are you sure you want to quit the game? Then we pass in the yes action and then we pass in the no action. So now, for example, on the yes action, in this case, we could just do application.quit. So this would quit the application, although in the editor, it doesn't really do anything, but we'll see that in a bit. And then for the no, then we simply do nothing. So do nothing on no. So by default, the question automatically hides itself. So there's nothing else we need to do. So just like this, it is working, but application.quit does not do anything in the editor. It only quits while you have a final build. So just for testing, just make sure that all of this works. Let's just go up here using Unity Editor. And then we can go into the editor application and we call exit play mode. Okay, so just like this, our testing should work. And let's just go into the question UI, remove our testing question. And by default, as soon as we awake, we set everything up and then we hide the question down. And also since on hide, we are setting the game object to inactive, then when we show, we need to set it back into active so that it actually shows up. So like this, there you go. When we press show question, it shows the game object. And when you go into hide, then it hides the object. Okay, so everything should be working. So let's test. Okay, so here I am, nothing is visible. Now I press the space bar and there you go. Are you sure you really want to quit the game? And if I press on no, then simply hides itself. Okay, great. Now I press space bar again. There you go, there's my question. Press on yes and there you go, it automatically stops the game. All right, awesome. Now let's see just two more things. So first of all, in order to once again make this super easy to use anywhere else in our code, we can just make this one into a prefab. So we got the question dialog prefab. If you want to modify any visuals, just go inside and modify the home prefab and then come back outside and reuse this prefab in any scenes you want. So that's a very quick improvement. And then also over here on the testing question dialog, here's an example of what I was saying previously about how you can ask questions inside questions. So you ask, are you sure you want to quit the game? Then inside, once again, question dialog, access the static instance and show the question. And are you really sure? And if you do, So yep, just like that, we ask a question and then we ask, are you really sure? So this is an example for how you can show a question, then another question right after that one. Again, if this seems confusing to you, go watch the video on lambdas and delegates. Once you understand that this is really just a function, then all of this logic becomes pretty clear. Okay, so let's see this code in action. So here I am, press the space bar. Are you sure you want to quit? And nope, and okay, everything continues. Once again, are you sure you want to quit? Now let's say yes, are you really sure? Nope, and yep, we're still here. And are you sure you want to quit? Yes. Are you really sure? Yes. And there you go, exit. All right, so here you have a super easy to use question dialog. Use this whenever you want to ask the player a question, like do you want to buy this item or quit the game or any question you want. If you've played my Steam games, then you've certainly seen a window just like this one. It's super easy to use and very effective. If you wanted, you could then expand upon this further in order to dynamically modify the size of the window based on the text amount. 
I covered something similar to that in the tooltip video, so you could definitely apply that to this. You could also make it support multiple buttons, so dynamically instantiate and position them, so you could have a window with yes and no buttons, another one with OK cancel or just OK. So depending on your use case, you can use this as a base and build upon it. Again, if you're looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.